good evening. It's great to be back with you on Women in Ministry TV broadcast. This is Faith and Healing School, the Faith and Healing Academy with Dr. Brandy Gibson, your host. It is a pleasure to be back with you. And we're getting into part two today of why it's God's will to heal you. Why it's God's will to heal you. I encourage you to pick up the phone Call some of those that really need to hear this word. Even if they're not sick, the word is preventative medicine. Amen. But before we get started, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer and invite Holy Spirit in, in the name of Jesus. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for this anointed and appointed time. We thank you that you anoint me because your word is already anointed. But Father, I thank you that I decrease, that Holy Spirit may increase in this teaching that comes forth with boldness, clarity, and accuracy. I speak not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of power in the matchless name of Jesus and to his glory. Amen. Well, praise God. Get your Bible. Get your notebook, get your pen, your iPad, or uh, actually get your phone because you can take notes there. You want to take notes so that after this show is over, you can go back, meditate on the word, and allow Holy Spirit to speak to you further about the word of God that came forth today. Now, because this is part two, I want to go back and just do a review. So we know that our text scripture is Luke chapter 5, verse 12. Luke 5, verse 12, and it says, And it came to pass when he, he being Jesus, was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And then verse 13, Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Immediately. Now I want to stop on immediately because of the fact that when Jesus laid hands on this particular man and this particular assignment, he immediately was made whole. Now, we are already healed. The enemy is trying to attack us with sickness or disease on our bodies. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice in going to Calvary to redeem us from sin, sickness, disease, and poverty. Amen? So, what we do is we fight the good fight of faith to maintain what he has already done for us and to execute the word of God, to fulfill the word of God in the earth, which is our assignment. Amen. Now, the reason why Luke 5.12 is the text scripture for this teaching is because I want to stress that it is God's will for you to be healed. It's not if it be thy will. People will tell you that even some pastors have told their parishioners when they're sick or in the hospital. Well, if it be the Lord's will, he'll heal you. But if it's not his will, but Jesus said right here, it is his will. He wouldn't have given his life for us to be redeemed back to the Father, redeemed from poverty, sickness, disease, if it weren't his will. Does that make sense? I mean, it's very simplistic. The thing is, we allow people to talk us out of our healing, and we shouldn't do that. The reason why we shouldn't do it is because we should be in the Word so we know what the Word of God says, and that prevents us from allowing people to talk us out of our healing. By no means am I telling you that you shouldn't go to the doctor, that you shouldn't have a particular surgery or whatever. I'm telling you, you always go to God first and he'll give you peace about that particular issue that you're dealing with. Amen. There are times that God will heal you instantaneously, which is a miracle. 
I've been there. I've experienced it. But the thing that you must understand here is that healing is progressive. Healing is progressive. See, healing is a renewal of the restoration of the body. And most people, when they hear of healing, that's what they think. They think instantaneously. What is so uncanny about that is when they go to the doctor, they don't think instantaneously. The doctor says, take this particular pill three times a day, take it for six days, and if you're not feeling better, come back again. You got to remember, doctors are practicing medicine. Jesus is the only one that has perfected healing in Jesus' name. So, but people on an average readily accept what the doctor says before they accept what the word of God says. So, we looked at previously Proverbs 4, verse 20. Write that down so you can go back to it, where it tells us that God's word is medicine. So, the more you take, the more intake of the word, the more you walk in divine help. That's for all of us, you and for me as well. So the thing with healing and God's medicine, which is his word, is that we can't overdose on it. We don't have any side effects of it. And see, a lot of times when we receive medication, from our doctors, we just take it faithfully without even looking at the medication ingredients to see if there's any side effects or whatever. All you have to do is watch television nowadays and you'll see all of these different medications coming on. And then they're not just, have you noticed, they're not just scrolling the disclaimer at the bottom, they're giving you the disclaimer at the bottom and telling you verbally that this medication, if you take it, could cause kidney disease, could cause bleeding, could cause heart attacks, could cause you to die. So are you still going to take it? You're already doing better than all of these particular things. So I tell you, the word of God is our remedy. So Proverbs 4.20 is the scripture you want to go back to to meditate on that, where we see that God's word is medicine. And then we also talked about that we should attend to his word. Attend to his word means that we should study it. We should get into it in the name of Jesus and uh, we understand that, you know, the pharmaceutical companies are making billions of dollars today. They don't care whether you're healed or not. They just want you to purchase their medication. So God has perfected medicine with no side effects. Do you know there's actually medication out that will heal cancer? But in certain countries, they are not even telling us about those uh, because they don't want us to get that remedy. They want us to still partake of purchasing from the pharmaceutical industry where there's kickbacks, there's money, blah, 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 blah. So allegedly. So now we also need to understand that when we're looking into God's word, we need to find what his word says. We need to dig deep in his word. You know, and then we know that when we speak forth his word, his word cannot return unto him void of power. That's Isaiah 55, 11. It has to accomplish what his word said it will do. So you confess it, you meditate it, you believe it, you act upon it in Jesus' name. So we understand in Psalms 107, stanza 20, his word says, God sent his word and healed you and delivered you from all your destructions. God is not limited. We don't have to put him in a box. God's word transcends time, matter, mileage, whatever. 
When we hear God's word, receive it, and God will heal you instantly right where you are because the word of God tells us in Romans chapter 10 that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. That's why when you read the Bible, you never read it to yourself. You read it aloud. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That word needs to get back down into your spirit and your spirit. See, that's where your healing comes from. Your healing is from the inside out, from the inside out. Amen. So God's word will heal you and snatch you out of the door of death. Okay. So we want to make sure that we understand that healing can be progressive it or a miracle is instantaneously. But you don't know if you're going to get a miracle. You cannot base everything on a miracle. Because see, when you base it on a miracle, that means you're not getting in the word and you're really trying to play on God's mercies. God tells us to study the word of God and show ourselves approved rightly dividing the word of truth. We're to get into the word of God. And then Hebrews 4 tells us that his word is quick, it's powerful, it's alive, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, and it cuts asunder to the spirit, the soul, and the marrow. It gets into every part of our being. So why would you want to avoid the true medicine and take it for granted when we readily receive from a man or a woman what they say and they're practicing and Jesus perfected. Okay. Also, uh, let's go to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. I want to read this for you. I don't want to... Uh, just state it and take for granted that you are definitely paying attention. I know you are. Just joking. Proverbs 18. Let's look at verse 14. It says, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Your spirit, man, the more you're feeding that spirit, the stronger he is getting. See, you have to understand we're a tripart being just like the Holy Trinity is. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Those are three individuals. They are uh, the same and one. Amen? It's the same way with us as far as we are a spirit first. We live in a body and we possess a soul. The soul is the seat of the mind, the will, and the emotions of man, you know. But man wants to really put his body and his emotions as number one over his spirit. So when we put the word of God into our hearts, which is the center, the core of man, not the organ, we're talking about the center of man, then that word is sustaining any infirmity. It's going against it to bring healing to you in the name of Jesus. And you know, one of the things that even now, this is what Christians will do. Some Christians have been doing this. They will avoid getting in the word. You notice I'm taking you right back to the word. They will avoid getting into the word of God by saying, I prayed, I prayed about it, I prayed about it. But see, when you think that all that is needed is prayer and you avoid the word of God, you fooled yourself. You know, even prayer without God's word is negligent and it's abominable, okay? So Proverbs 28, since we're in Proverbs, let's go there. Proverbs 28 tells us, Let's look at that. Proverbs 28. Where was I looking at that? 
Let's see. Let's look at verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. I'm giving you wisdom as to how to receive the word of God in Jesus' name and how you can really, truly receive your healing by faith. Everything that we do is by faith. You have on your computer the Women in Ministry TV broadcast. Either you're watching it on Facebook or you're watching it on YouTube. But you have gone to that and you have faith in that little instrument that you can go directly to Women in Ministry TV and you will see this particular ministry. You did that by faith. Some of you are sitting in a chair right now watching this program. You're sitting by faith knowing or having faith in the fact that the chair is not going to break and you're going to fall out of it. Everything we do is by faith. Amen? It has to be by faith. But we have to use God's word on purpose and target our faith towards certain situations. Amen? So let's look at, uh, let's go to Luke. I'm going to go to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And let's look at verse 10. And he said, he being Jesus, unto you, that's you, and I, is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Now, verse 11 gives us a key into the parables, okay, because it says, now the parable is this, the seed is is the word of God. And then it gets into the parable of the seed. And we should know about that parable of the seed. So I'm not here to teach on the parable of the seed. Today, I'm here to tell you that it is given unto you. It is commanded unto you and I by Jesus himself that we must know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And that's from the word of God. We have to use the word of God in order to understand what Jesus is saying and to understand the call of God upon our lives. Do you know when you were born, the day you were born was the day that you entered into the world with a godly assignment and the enemy wanted to divert that assignment on your life by either confusing you, distracting you, or killing you. The word of God tells us in John 10, 10, the thief comes but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus says in that same verse, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God wants you to have things in abundance in Jesus' name. He is not the one that's bringing sickness, disease, lack, poverty, Harm, he doesn't do that. Acts 10, 38 tells us who does. It tells us God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So the oppression comes from the devil. Too many times you hear at uh, funerals, uh, I say funerals because see a home going is for a believer. A funeral is for those that, you know, really didn't live a life unto God, but then you don't know what that person did the last second of their life or if they gave their life unto God or if they cried out to him. The point is, as a believer, we are to pray for all men. But the point that I want to stress is that you hear at those ceremonies where they'll say, well, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. 
They took that whole passage of scripture in the book of Job totally out of context. And it's not saying that God is the one that took your loved one during 2020, prevented you from getting there. Because a lot of people, and you may be one of them, you're mad at God because your loved one left earth through death. I just told you who caused it. And God is not killing us to bring us to heaven, especially if your loved one was talented as a singer and you hear the pastor get up and say, well, God needed another person in his choir in heaven. No, he didn't. He got zillions of angels up there. And plus, our loved ones have gone on before us 24-7. They're all up there giving glory to God. Harmony, singing, praising, and they're learning because they're playing. God's plan is that they're coming back with Jesus. Amen? So, again, another subject matter. But let's go to... Um, Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 6. It says, If thou, brethren, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and good doctrine. Whereunto thou hast a table. Then it also says, but refuse profane and old wives' table fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. But it says, put the brethren in remembrance of these things. Put them in remembrance that it's the word of God that is quick, powerful, sharp, even to the Dividing asunder of spirit, soul, and marrow. Put them in remembrance that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. Put them in remembrance that he sent his word and healed you and delivered you from all your destructions. Put them in remembrance of what God's word is. When you do that, you're nourishing them up in the word and building their, their faith and you as well because you are speaking forth those words by faith. So we need to nourish ourselves up with the word of God. Too many times, too many times, very, very often, we will go pay memberships to go and exercise our bodies to get our bodies fit, but we don't exercise our spirit, man. The exercise in our spirit is getting into the word, believing the word, acting on the word, speaking the word, doing the word. Simple, but we'll go and we'll exercise our muscles and, you know, get them in shape and practice, you know, and toning up and all of that. But yet we don't get into the word, which builds up our spirit, man, and affects healing in our bodies from the inside out. See, we're so focused on building from the outside, getting the outside, trying to get that house together, you know? So, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you need to have it in priority. It's your spirit man first. See, man, God is a spirit, and they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Even in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, let us make man in our own image. Who is us? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let's make man in our own image. Well, what is that image? God is a spirit. God is also love. Think about that. So, we need to nourish Nourish. That's what you're doing right now. You're doing an intake. You're hearing. Your ears are intaking the words that I'm speaking from his word. You're taking that in and it's going into your spirit. So 
then you're nourishing yourself up from the word of faith. You're not doing a, a mental ascension. You're nourishing yourself from God's word. There is a difference. So in Romans 10.10, 10, let's go there. Romans 10.10. 10. Romans chapter 10, and we're going to look at verse 10. And then again, you know what? I'm going to do something better. Let's go to verse 8. Because, see, God sent his son to the world. To the world. He didn't send his son just to the Jews. He didn't send his son just to blacks. He didn't send his son just to the church because when Jesus came physically on earth, the church was not even here. The church didn't show up until the book of Acts. So God sent his son into the world. So that means when you cry out to Jesus, you don't have to be saved in order to be healed. He was sent to the world. But you need to be saved in order for you to totally be redeemed back to the Father. You need to know how to sustain your healing. You need to know how to maintain your healing. You need to know how to minister healing to other individuals through the word of God and by faith. So if you have never, ever received Jesus in your life, here is the passage of scripture that you need right here to obtain it. So let's look at this in Romans chapter 10, and it's going to take you further than you have ever, ever imagined. It's going to change you. You're going to be transformed. And then you need to continue your transformation through the word of God. Amen. So it says here in verse eight, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Is it not? And in thy heart, and that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, it says thou shall be saved. So you don't have to work for it. You just have to believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. And then it says right here in verse 10, with the heart. Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation means more than you going to heaven and missing hell. Salvation is protection, it's quality of life, it's healing, it's wealth, it's prosperity. All of those things are encompassed in salvation. So you want to take advantage of that. So if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to definitely right now go over those scriptures. Confess with your mouth. I do believe that he is my Lord, my Savior, and I believe he died and he went to the grave. He rose again. And most of all, I believe he's coming back again for me. And I also believe that he has healed me. He has healed me from all my destructions. So don't just get into bodily exercise and avoid spiritual exercise. You want to do that. And some of the things that you want to refrain from is you want to refrain from fear. You want to refrain from worry because that will drain you. Too many irons in the fire will drain you. Things that God didn't tell you to do will drain you. Strife will drain you quicker than anything. So you don't want to get into strife. The devil knows it and he wants you to uh, really think that, okay, it's okay to be upset and it's okay for you to avenge and get vengeance on something that someone else has done. All of that incurs sickness and disease into your body. Abort it. He knows what he's doing, but do you. So I want to thank you for tuning in to Faith in Healing Academy with yours truly, Dr. Brandi Gibson. 
I'm going to give you the opportunity right here, right now to sow seed into this ministry. Also, you'll hear uh, or you'll see information as to how you can sow seed into the Women of Ministry TV broadcast on Facebook. And there's information about our magazine, The Uncommon Man, and Seven Figures. These are respectively a men's Christian digital magazine as well as the women's digital magazine. And so with that, I encourage you today to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. See you next week.